right. Hey guys, sorry, just getting set up. Um, so I am doing something a little different today. I received some brushes to do an honest review and I figured now is a good time. So these are brushes by a company called D-A-C-O. I don't know how they pronounce it, Daco, Daco. But um, it has, I think, 16 brushes. And, hold on one second. It's pretty nice so far. Uh, I really like the case because it has these holes in it. A lot of my brush cases get a lot of moisture here and it can get kind of nasty. So it's nice that it has that. There's um, all different brushes and these are supposedly good for all mediums from watercolor, acrylic, oils. Uh, it does have a palette knife here, which is really sturdy. It's not super flexible. I like more of a flexible palette knife, but it's pretty sturdy for the price. I think the kit overall is $35 on Amazon. This uh, is one of those little rubber smudgers. I don't really know, but um, I never use these, but it seems like it could be a pretty handy tool. It has all different brush shapes. Here's one of those fan brushes to get your Bob Ross paintings on. Uh, I use mostly the flats and maybe some of the smaller rounds but I've used these a couple of times and I'm not really sure how I feel about them. My initial impressions were that they don't hold the paint quite as well as I would like. They might be better suited for acrylics, but I'm gonna try to do an entire painting with just these. So let's see how that goes. Oh, and it has this brush too, which has, I think they're called rakes but um, should give you a lot of really cool effects. So again, this is D-A-C-O Clarity. Oh, it also comes with a little sponge, which is nice for watercolor artists, but I haven't used it and I just use my rags. So here is the kit. I have a painting all sketched out yeah. I'm going to pull out the brushes that I'll probably use the most, which is this angle brush and maybe a couple of flats. I do wish the flats had longer hair, longer bristles. And I'm thinking maybe you might want to wash them before using. I noticed a couple of my paintings when using these straight out of the uh thing is there were some bubbles i don't know if it was soap or just the paper that i was using all right so we'll try those actually let me show you some brush strokes i have another pad of paper here so this is the flat let's use a color i don't use very often and it's pretty decent. I wish it did hold more paint so that it could last longer. Um, here's a fan brush. Ooh, this one's really nice actually. It has, it's very flexible. These ones are a little bit stiff for my liking. They're not too bad. And here's this rake brush, or comb is what it's called. So you can get, you know, some interesting textures. Overall, I do think this is a really great deal. There's, you know, for 35 bucks, 
The cases alone can be pretty expensive. And they are solid. Like I haven't had any stray hairs or um, any loose ferrules or anything. All right, I have my brushes set aside. Let's pull out a few more just in case. It does have a long liner, which I like. They do come with these little plastic things on top and each brush is individually wrapped. So I have taken them all out of the plastic to show you. Okay. So I'm sitting outside and I See this little dandelion in the shade? <clears throat> it's not the best lighting, but it has some really nice stuff going on. So I'm gonna try to see, ah, this is a mess. See how this goes. It's got some really bright and warm greens. So I'm gonna start with those first. I'm using the angle brush. I always liked these angle brushes, but never really had them available. Yeah, this is also turning out to be a little bit sudsy, so I wish I had washed these. Let me show you the texture. I don't think it's, you know, see all those little bubbles? Definitely give these a wash. But I'm gonna keep going. It's not that bad. But I love these this brush, you can get all different types of angles in it. It feels really nice to paint with. I am being completely honest in this review. I don't want to deceive anyone or, um, you know, I just want to be honest. It is nice to get the supplies though, so I do appreciate it. And we can always use extra brushes. Yeah, this is a gouache painting. Um, I'm getting all these hot greens right now. Some fuzz in there. What I liked about this scene was the leaves are folding in really interesting ways. Very elegant. This paper is an Arches cold press and I almost exclusively use this paper. It is my favorite. It's very expensive, but um, it soaks up the paint really well. Hello, Clara. Hi, Albert. 
I'm only half paying attention to the screen. <clears throat> so my apologies if I miss it. You all know that I pretty much just use the same brushes. I use flats, but I'm gonna try to remember to mix it up a little bit since this is a <clears throat> demonstration of brushes. And that's a little dandelion. I did change the composition a bit because it was all kind of leaning this way. So I kind of just moved it up, fill the page a little better. The brand of brushes is called DACO. And I think they sell on Amazon. I need to do more research. The paper you can buy, um, I get mine through mostly Jerry's Artorama, but a lot of art stores carry it. It's called Arches, A-R-C-H-E-S. I do wish, I don't know if I said this, but I wish they had a bigger brush. I'm gonna use the fan brush because I really liked it. seems to be covering the most space. Mixing some orange and some ultramarine blue to get a nice cool gray. And I'm watering it down quite a bit. I almost always use blocks. I don't like stretching paper and it's just convenient for me. So yeah, I do wish this these brushes held a little more paint. I'm finding myself having to dip back into the <clears throat> paint quite a bit, which isn't too bad. I might be overly critical. Kind of shifting it to a cooler color up here to give the impression of distance. I need to learn to play with my textures more. I tend to like a lot of flat and clean colors, but I should, I should experiment. There's a guy named Tommy Forgive me, I can't think of his last name, but he does all of his paintings, his gouache paintings with a fan brush like this. It's really cool. I love his art. If anyone can think of who I'm thinking of, please write it in the comments. My palette just gets muddy. I don't mind it. I think um, I think it's okay to have a little bit of other colors bleeding into each other. I do try to clean my palette off if I'm using if I have like a white background or a very light background where pure colors are a little more important, but. Overall, I don't mind it. Oh, Tommy Kim, that's right. Thank you. I love his work. So 
So I'm treating this a lot like watercolor. I use very thin washes and when you do it this way, you get a lot of really cool effects working wet and wet. Everything kind of bleeds into each other really nicely. I tend to, this is something I want to work on, but I tend to go over things too much and not leave the pretty stuff that I'm seeing. I am liking this fan brush a lot. I always think of Bob Ross. He was the fan brush king. Uh, I don't always do the background last. I kind of work all different ways. <laughs> That's why, you know, if you're watching a demo of mine, just take everything with a grain of salt. I, I'm always experimenting. And the board, it is gouache. Yes, I forgot my little sign that I usually have, but um, it is gouache and this is Arches cold press watercolor paper. So I'm adding a little more warmth in the foreground while it's still wet. So you get a lot of cool stuff bleeding together. I should have left this edge a little messy like this. All right. I'm gonna go back in. I missed some of these bright green spots. And using the white of the paper is really the way to get these really saturated and light colors. If you try to do it by mixing white with a color, it'll work, but it won't work as, it won't be as bright. You're always gonna desaturate things a little bit. <clears throat> I'm just trying to cover all these little white dots that I'm seeing. Um, it usually takes me two to three hours to do a painting, but actually more like an hour and a half to three hours, depending on the size. Oh my god, that was John. Um, but with this little one, you know, this is ranging from a full sheet of watercolor paper to doing a little like five by seven. Five by seven would only take me probably less than an hour. This is a eight by 10, which shouldn't take me too long. So I'm kind of letting things dry a little bit. You'll probably notice things start to lighten up a lot. There's some really great, cool greens where it's reflecting the light from the sky. <laughs> so let's get some of these yes waiting to dry podcast everyone should go listen to it I have an episode I forgot the number 60 something I think so I'm trying to get these lighter parts and these are all the parts that are kind of facing upward towards the sky. And that's why we're gonna get a more cool
cool and light color. I want to separate it a little bit from the background, so I'm trying to push the values a little, make this lighter. I'm going to attempt to exercise some restraint from trying to cover up everything like I usually do. We'll see if that works. Hello, Sunflower Yumi. All right, I'm going, I'm gonna use this round. I'm gonna rinse it off, try to get some of that residue off. So since this is all actually in shadow, these light parts are still pretty cool. It's actually a really tiny flower, but I'm blowing it up for you guys. And it is the lightest part. Oops. It is way too thick. One thing I learned from working on the um, Snoopy Pop game is to work with different directions of brush strokes to get different strokes. So Charles Schultz would paint or would draw rain in ink but he actually worked this way, I think, to draw the drop. So it'd be thicker at the bottom and then be pulled up like that, which seems really obvious, but um, I didn't <laughs> think about it. It's very useful. So the darkest parts are kind of right here, the base of the flower. And this works to our advantage because we want the greatest contrast to be where you want the eye to go. My paints do stay, oops, bleeding. They stay pretty moist in the palette. They have been drying out a bit because I've been working a lot outside in the garden. But let me show you, I get this question all the time. I spray my paint down heavily. So there's actually pools of water and a lot of people don't work this way. And I'm always telling students to spray their paints because I want it to have kind of a pancake batter consistency. Sometimes it gets a little bit too watery, but it'll actually reactivate the paint that's dried and absorb it. If it does dry completely, sometimes I'll pour a bunch of water in it and then let it sit overnight. So I'm gonna wipe off this drip that I did 
and then clean off my palette. I do this kind of towards the end after I have everything blocked in so that I can get a little more accurate colors. It doesn't matter so much when you're to have a messy palette when you're blocking stuff in because it's more about getting the right value than it is about the perfect color. I am going to... I find these spots to be really distracting, so... You know, I might go over the whole background again. We'll see. Going back with my round, and I'm gonna try to get some more detail. Mixing some red. I pretty much always mix all the primary colors together, no matter what color I'm using. So even if it looks more red, I will have a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow. So again, for those just joining, this uh, painting was meant to be a review of this brush set, D-A-C-O. Daco? Daco? Um, 16 brushes, all different types, supposedly good for all mediums, but I haven't tried it out on anything but gouache. So hopefully I'll get to try my palette knife and the smudging tool for the oil paints. Going back to the painting. I'm really glad you can't see my lap completely because it's covered in paint. I want to get even darker. It's not quite purple, a little warmer. Sometimes when painting these plants, it gets a little bit confusing to remember which leaf is what leaf. All sorts of colors in these dandelions. So I like painting them. It's bits of purple, orange, green. I'm getting confused just painting this and it doesn't even have that many leaves. I'll try to show you the subject before I leave. And now I'm using some white. I have some of this like, it's a mix of linden green from Windsor Newton and then a, what is it called? A, pr 
permanent yellow green from Turner Design Gouache, which can be found on Jerry's Artorama. Sorry, I'm like a big promo right now. Gotta survive somehow. Can't say no to art supplies. So you can get these bright glowy colors by using white, but you have to be careful and I do still think that the best way to do it is by um, using the white of the paper. I'm doing a live like you. Aggie's been doing a bunch lately. You should follow her at the Little Red House. She does these really cute drawings and has been selling them like crazy. She doesn't talk during them though. <laughs> Is gouache hard to find right now? I I haven't bought any in a while. I did um, get some extra white just because I was a little nervous <laughs> and I'm already going through most of it. It's all out of stock at Jerry's? Wow. That's so crazy. I do, um, you know, there isn't really a brand I don't like. The only one that I'm kind of hesitant to promote is, um, what is it? Van Gogh, I think, because they, it, the texture is just different. It's not bad, it's just different. It feels more like an oil paint and has uh, darker, richer colors, which again, isn't bad, but it's, it doesn't feel like standard gouache in my opinion. some of these nice kind of purpley pinky colors. I do like M Gram a lot because, oops, um, it reactivates the best out of all the paints, but really, let's see. I have Turner Design Gouache because I've been working with Jerry's and I selected a palette so you can find my custom palette if you search my name on their website, but um, I also have Windsor Newton is really good they do like the consistency isn't quite the same 
all around. Some of the colors do harden up a lot, like the alizarin crimsons or burnt umbers. The Turner Design Gouache, honestly, like giving you my complete honest feedback, is pretty good for what it is. I really like the tubes. I'm not constantly needing a wrench or pliers to open it. And the consistency is very similar across the board. It is a little more liquidy than I maybe would like, but um, with this palette that I picked, you can pretty much do anything. And it is all made in Japan. They come in these 25 milliliter tubes. I think there is a larger white that I have. I also have um, I have some Holbein, which is also really good. It is a little more expensive, I think, but it's a solid paint. And I like these Winsor Newton cadmium free paints. They're a lot more expensive. Uh, I think this is $15 a tube, so I use it sparingly and I don't mind just having like a permanent lemon. It doesn't need to be a cadmium lemon. I'm trying to think of other brands. I have a few M. Graham paints. I honestly don't have as many as I used to. Yeah, Turner is definitely one of the more affordable gouache paints. Um, you know, they're all pretty much around $5 a tube, but I think these are like four something when they're on sale. And it's 25 milliliters, so there's quite a bit of paint. Uh, let's see here, what else am I gonna do? Putting in some shadow. It's kind of a diffuse lighting, but I think if I don't have a shadow to ground it, it's not gonna read very well. This leaf is actually touching the ground. How do you pronounce that? Um, I do not have any of theirs. Their paint is very expensive. So <laughs> I don't use super duper expensive paints. I have a budget and I go through a lot of paint. Maybe if they wanted to send me some for a wonderful review like this. But those brands tend to not send freebies. Alright, I think I'm about done. Um, might fiddle with this a little bit more. I'm enjoying the company and I like answering all the questions. Let's go with the smaller flat. This is a seven flat. I never understood the numbers, but since they're different, for each brand. I would say it's about, it's somewhere in between a half inch and a quarter inch flat. Oh, thank you. In my own TV show. I think it'd be fun. Uh, let's 
Let's see here. So this leaf is kind of folding in like that. I'm going over and kind of pushing in the values one last time. And I know this is going to dry darker just from, you know, the experience of painting literally thousands of paintings. Everyone always wants the secret, but it's really just painting a ton and getting to understand how things work. It's kind of whipping around in the wind. It's really nice out. <laughs> Thank you. I am glad you find it relaxing. We all need more relaxation. details there's this nice warm light pink from where there's a vein in the leaf that like kind of on this underside, but it's a little bit darker. And I'm always looking for where else it is. Sorry for all the noise. We live pretty close to Bart. lighter vein coming up here. So overall, I have just used these brushes and I think they're worth the 30 bucks. Especially if you're just starting it gives you a lot of brushes. And the case, the case is so nice. I love these. Although I'll show you the case I have now, which is also really nice. It's this, uh, just stow it. You can get these on Amazon. At they're getting harder to find, to be honest, but I like the size. It's very small, you know, maybe three or four inches wide, and they're very tall, so you can carry your long brushes, your long handled brushes. And it has a plastic insert at the top, which is nice if you have wet brushes, so it doesn't leak through. And I store a ton of brushes in this thing. I try to keep it pared down to the essentials, but um, it has all different shapes and sizes of these, which are nice for bigger brushes and smaller brushes. You don't want them kind of jumbling around. Um, so it's D-A-C-O, DACO. I feel like the elastic here is pretty tight. They seem more like evenly sized. There's not really very large ones and very small ones. So I would be probably more uh, strategic about 
having them sized a certain way and keeping them that way because the bigger brushes will stretch out the elastic. So I'm going to have my smaller brushes to the bigger brushes. But it's pretty good. I don't know what this is. Oh. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how this works. Why would you need. I don't know. I'm sure there's some hidden tricks in here. So that's my painting. I'm I'm pretty much done. Mm, I always say this and then I keep going. I see I need to get some of this here. Cause normally <coughs> normally I would go back over the background a million times, but I'm trying to be good trying to learn and do things differently. Ah, that was too bright. But if I were to go over the background again, I could probably sharpen up the edges of these leaves. But you know what? It looks kind of nice to have some fading away and the focus being on the flower. And I really love the shape of this leaf. I don't know if I need to hang it, yeah. That's true. I could do that. But I don't know why this one is here. Like what? Hmm. All right, anyway, that's it. Thank you all for watching and chatting with me. It was really fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, one last time, you sound like a broken record. D-A-C-O is the brand. And you can find it on Amazon, I think $35. I might have a coupon code um, to give out, but I'll post it in my stories and I will share this as a live review. So thank you all for watching.